How to lower the action on an electroacoustic guitar. And this video is for anyone who owns an electroacoustic guitar and wants to lower the action. However, I'll be particularly leaning towards the Yamaha SLG range. And that's because I've had a couple of inquiries about the SLG 200N, which seems to have a problem with higher action. In this video, we're going to look at three aspects of adjusting the action on an acoustic or an electroacoustic guitar. And they are neck relief, saddle height, and finally, we'll just inspect the nut. So, let's get started. How to inspect and adjust the neck relief on an electroacoustic guitar. The first thing you need to do to adjust the action on any guitar is to check the neck relief. And this job is the same on any electroacoustic, acoustic or even electric guitar. And the neck relief is really the bend in the neck of the guitar. And in the perfect world, this should be zero or close to zero. And how we inspect the neck is to use a straight edge or a ruler and you want to hold it against the frets to see if there's any gapping between the frets and the ruler. And this way we can tell if the neck is straight or not. As you could see here, I quite often check the neck near the bottom E string, near the centre of the guitar, and near the top E string. And this is just in case there's a twist in the neck. And I've only ever found a twist twice, and I've tested hundreds of guitars. What we're looking for when we hold the ruler alongside the neck is either a bow, or we're looking for a hump. And a bow is where the neck is moving away from the strings around the middle of the neck. So it looks like a bow and arrow. And a hump is where the neck is moving towards the strings around the middle of the neck. So if you hold your ruler against the frets and around the middle of the neck you're getting a gap between the ruler and the frets then you've got a neck with a bow in it. Alternatively if you're holding your ruler alongside the frets and it's touching the frets in the middle but not around the edge then you've got a hump. Now be very careful because when you're holding it flat against the guitar, the ruler, sometimes you'll find it's touching across a few frets in the middle of the neck. So if you just inspect it very quickly, you might assume your neck is straight. However, what you then need to do is just get hold of the ends of the ruler at the very tip and try rocking it to and fro. And if the ruler will rock, then you've obviously got a gap between the ruler and the end frets. So you've got a hump that needs to be slightly adjusted. Now, to keep the neck straight, or make the neck straight, the vast majority of guitars have a thing called a truss rod. So if your guitar does have a hump or a bow, we can straighten this using the truss rod. And you'll find the truss rod at either end of the neck. It's either going to be inside the sound hole or underneath a special cover at the headstock called a truss rod cover. And to demonstrate this, I'll remove the truss rod cover from a Yamaha SLG 200N. However, as I said earlier, it's exactly the same on lots of guitars. So I'm removing the three screws that hold the truss rod cover into place. I've speeded this bit up so we get through it more quickly. A 
and underneath the truss rod cover is an allen bolt which is the end of the truss rod and this is what you use to adjust the truss rod to get the correct neck relief on your guitar. Hopefully you will have received the correct tool with your guitar to adjust this. Otherwise you might have to go through a few allen keys to find the correct size for your guitar as they're not all the same size. Or alternatively you can do a Google search to find out what tool you need to adjust the truss rod on your particular make and model of guitar. Because whilst an allen key is probably the most common tool used to adjust a truss rod, some guitars use different tools. Right, before we see how to adjust the truss rod, let's just see what it does. What does a truss rod do? Right, to explain this I'm going to be using a very simplified drawing. And whilst I know it's not accurate, it gives you a very good idea of how the truss rod works and what to look for when you're adjusting it. And you can see here the black line represents the neck or the fingerboard. The strings are the top line and the truss rod is the bottom line. And we've got a pivot at the end joining the three. Looking at the image as it is now, you can see that it's completely balanced. So that the line in the middle or the neck is completely straight. However, if I tighten up the truss rod so it's too tight, it causes the neck to form a hump. And this is because the truss rod is pulling back on the neck. Now, because the truss rod and the strings have to stay in balance, I can get the same effect if I was to weaken off the pressure on the strings. So for example, if I was to detune the guitar, or if I was to put very light strings on, this can cause the same effect. Right, let's return the diagram back to a well-balanced guitar. And now, if we loosen off the truss rod, so there's less pressure on the truss rod, what you'll end up with is the neck will form a bow. And this is because there's more force coming from the strings than from the truss rod. So again, it's out of balance. And again, as before, if you were to replace the strings with very heavy strings, or if you were to tune the guitar up so it was higher, then these can have the same effect because the strings are pulling stronger against the truss rod. So hopefully from this explanation, you could see why your guitar might be perfectly well set up. And then when you change the strings, it can lose the setup. And most of the time, it's just to do with the pressure on the truss rod and the truss rod needs adjusting. Right, let's summarise this in a way that hopefully you can understand. And that is that if your guitar neck has a bow, then the truss rod is too loose and it needs to be tightened up. Whereas if your guitar neck has a hump, then the truss rod is too tight and it needs to be loosened off a bit. And normally the truss rod would be a standard right hand thread. So to remember which way to turn it, you could remember righty tighty and lefty loosey. Right, let's do a practical application of a truss rod adjustment on this Yamaha SLG200N which is the guitar that I've had inquiries about. The first thing I need to do is inspect the neck relief. And I need to find out if it's got a bow or a hump or if it's already flat. Looking at the ruler around the center of the neck, you can see there's a slight gap, which means it's got a very slight bow. So, from the illustrations we've looked at previously, you should now know that if the neck has got a bow in it, then the truss rod is too loose. So it needs to be tightened, which means we turn it clockwise or to the right. Now, looking at the truss rod adjustment with the Allen key in place, you can see I've got absolutely no room to turn it. 
So what I'm actually going to have to do is detune the middle two strings or the D and the G string and then I'm going to have to move those across so I got room to turn the Allen Cree back and forward. The problem with this is that I've released some of the pressure on the neck and this might affect the profile. So before I can finish I'll have to recheck the profile with the guitar tuned back up again. Now when adjusting the truss rod I do it in very small increments and then retest the neck with the ruler. I tend to adjust the truss rod in quarter turns. However, if the neck is a really long way out, you can start with half turns and then move to quarter turns and then finally finish with just tiny little tweaks until you've got the neck exactly straight. You definitely don't want to go too far and end up with a hump in the guitar neck, even a slight one, because it's actually worse to have a slight hump in the guitar than to have a slight bow. So keep adjusting the neck by small increments and then retesting it until you're happy. Once you're fairly happy with the profile of the neck, you want to put the two middle strings back into place and tune the guitar up and then check the profile again. Once you're happy that the neck is straight, you can then put the truss rod cover back into place and that's the guitar's profile done. It's important when you're putting the truss rod cover back into place to be very careful. You want it tight enough so that it won't vibrate when you're playing the guitar but you don't want to over tighten it because otherwise it'll split. It's quite remarkable the effect the profile has on the action of a guitar. And with most guitars, the profile isn't set when you get the guitar. So in 9 out of 10 cases, this will get your action to a decent height. But if the action's still too high, you need to adjust the saddle. How to adjust the saddle? The saddle is the plasticky looking thing that's embedded into the bridge. And regarding adjusting the saddle, the saddle is exactly the same on an acoustic guitar and on an electroacoustic guitar. And they're removed the same way. But before you remove the saddle, there's a couple of important things you need to do. The first thing I'd suggest would be to buy a spare saddle. And this is because to adjust the saddle, you actually have to sand it down. And if you were to go too far, the guitar might be unplayable. So a spare saddle is definitely a worthwhile thing to have. Now, in order to order a new saddle, you'll have to measure the size of the old one. So you've got a good idea what to order. But they do generally come in a few standard sizes. The guitar I've been adjusting in this video which is the Yamaha SLG 200N, is actually slightly larger than the standard size, which is 80mm. And this one comes in at 82mm. But if you've already got an 80mm saddle, or it's all you can get hold of, it'll still work just fine. The next thing you need to do is to measure the action. And you need to measure it on the 12th fret of the bottom E string and the 12th fret of the top E string. And it's essential you measure it at the 12th fret in order to make the maths easier later on. It's also worth measuring the height of the action above the bridge right alongside the saddle. Now we just have to do a couple of final checks before we start taking the guitar apart. And this is where we need the measurements. And the first measurement you need is how much you want to lower the action by. So if you measured the action to be 4mm on the bottom E string 
and you want it to be two millimeters, then we want to lower the action by two millimeters. Now, this means at the saddle, you need to sand off four millimeters. So you have to double it. Another example, if you want to reduce the action height by one and a half millimeters, we'd have to sand three millimeters off the saddle. And this is just because of basic trigonometry. At the nut, the action's not going to change at all. And halfway down the guitar, it will change by half what it changes at the saddle. And halfway down the guitar is the 12th fret. This is why it was so important to do all the measurements at the 12th fret. Now, something you need to pay particular attention to is do you have enough height in the saddle to allow you to reduce it by whatever your goal is? And this is where we measured the action at the bridge by the saddle because this tells you how high the saddle is above the bridge. And if that is four millimeters and you want to lower the saddle by four millimeters, then obviously you can't because the string then will be touching the bridge and not the saddle. So whatever height you want to reduce the saddle by, it must always remain at least two or three millimeters above the bridge. Otherwise it just won't work correctly and your guitar won't sound very good at all. And sometimes if your guitar's a few years old or it's second hand, you'll notice that the saddle has already been reduced as far as it can be and there's no way you can actually lower the action on that particular guitar without major work on the bridge. So unfortunately you'll have to live with that. Another thing that you need to consider before you even start this job is the brake angle across the saddle. And what this means is the bend in the string as it passes over the saddle. If there isn't a reasonable brake angle over the saddle, then there's no force pushing the saddle down into the guitar. And this reduces the transmission of sound into the body of the guitar, or in the case of an electroacoustic guitar, into the pickup. Now, don't worry if your brake angle is slight, as long as it's got some brake angle. What we're looking to avoid is the string going completely flat or only just off flat, because this will cause you loss of tone. Looking at the design of the SLG200N, there's no chance this is going to be a problem, because it's been designed really well, so there's a really positive brake angle across the saddle, even when the saddle's been sanded down quite low. You'll notice on my SLG200N that I've actually modified the ends of the string slightly by fitting flamenco beads. And these improve the guitar in a lot of ways. And one of the ways they improve the guitar is to increase the brake angle. This isn't a review video and I've got no attachment with that company, but I do recommend them because I've put those now on all my nylon strung guitars. I realise that drawing your attention to all the potential pitfalls is rather daunting, but really don't worry about it. This going onto YouTube and potentially tens or hundreds of thousands of people seeing the video, I'm covering those very, very few instances where one or two of these issues might arise. And then at least you're aware of the problem before you start the job. And hopefully you've bought a spare saddle anyway. Right, I'll remove the saddle now so I can adjust it. And to do this, I need to remove all the strings. Now, I'm not going to do this in detail in this particular video. So if you've never done that before, I'll put a link down below to how to replace the strings on both a nylon strung guitar and a steel strung guitar. And hopefully you can use those videos when you're ready to put the strings back on. Once you've removed the strings, hopefully the saddle will come out really easily. But if it doesn't, you might need to use something like a pair of pliers just to get hold of it so you can give it a bit of a tug. And if you've got an electroacoustic guitar, you just need to be aware that the pickup is underneath the saddle. 
and most of the time it'll just stay seated inside the bridge. However, sometimes it might lift slightly. And if this does happen, don't worry about it. Just push it back in when you reseat the saddle. When you remove the saddle, it's important to note which way round it is. Because they're higher on the bottom E string than on the top E string to allow for a slightly higher action on the bottom E. Right, I'll put away the guitar somewhere safe. Now you need to mark off the part of the saddle you want to sand away. Remembering that you always sand the bottom of the saddle and not the top. I quite often use tape to mark the saddle and this is because it protects the saddle. It can be adjusted and moved if you put it in the wrong place and it can give you something to get hold of to keep your fingers away from the abrasive paper. Whatever method you use to mark the saddle, you should make sure it's something that won't come off easily. The worst thing that can possibly happen at this stage is for the markings to come off when you're halfway through sanding it, because then you don't know how much material you've taken off and how much is yet to go. So basically, you have to put the strings back on, remeasure everything and start again from scratch. And doing the measurements and the markings are a critical part of this job because if they're not accurate you won't do a good job. So take your time over it to make sure it's correct. The next step is to prepare your sandpaper and I tend to use quite a coarse grain and this is because once you've been sanding the saddle for a minute or two the material blocks up the grain and makes it less abrasive and a coarser one stays abrasive for longer. What's far more important than the grade of sandpaper is the surface you use to sand on and it should be completely flat and level. So something like a sheet of glass or a desk or a kitchen countertop will do ideally. I use an aluminium block and that's really just because I've been using this for years and I know I can get good results using it. And when I say sandpaper this is just the generic use of the term. You could use emery cloth or wet and dry or anything that you can keep completely flat while it's just sanding the surface. And whilst you're sanding the saddle, make sure it's completely upright and at 90 degrees to the surface you're using to sand it. And this is because the bottom needs to be completely flat so it gets good contact with the body of the guitar or the pickup, depending on whether your guitar is acoustic or electroacoustic. Now, once you've sanded down to your marks, keeping the saddle completely flat and at 90 degrees to the sanding block, you can then finish up and put your guitar back together. Obviously, you need to make sure you put in the saddle the right way around, so the bottom E side is where the bottom E will be and the top E side is where the top E should be. And it might be worth at this stage checking your strings and if you've got a spare set, replace them. As you can see with this guitar, whilst the strings look pretty good on the guitar, now I've got them off, they definitely need replacing. If you follow the steps in this video correctly, theoretically the action on your guitar should be the height you want it. However, there's one other thing that can affect the action, especially around the open strings, and that is the nut. However, we need to cover this in a separate video. And this is because, whilst you'd think it was a very simple item, it's actually one of the hardest. So, I'd rather do a separate video of the nut, so we can cover it in fine detail. If you'd like to see that video, or any of my other new videos, Hit the like, subscribe and bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you're interested in learning the guitar properly, I encourage you to visit my YouTube channel and go through the playlists. Because there you'll find a number of guitar courses that are complete and the videos are in order. Also, you can find these at www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you'll find all the courses laid out and all the videos in order 
and you can view the ebooks online there for free. Or if you want to download them to your device and print them out at your own discretion, you can pay a small donation to do that. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best with your guitar setup and I think you'll find it really improves the instrument.